The topic for this video is devices. We are going to show you how you can easily add and design a few of your large devices in your system on the flow sheet. We are going to start with an empty flow sheet with all of your system properties defined. If you do not know how to define your system properties, please go to section 2, System Settings. The first device that we are going to learn how to design is the tank. A tank is a pressure source and can be found in the toolbox under Basic Devices. To add a tank to the flow sheet, we are going to left click on the tank icon in the toolbox and then move our cursor to the location on the flow sheet that we want our tank. Then we will left click our mouse again and a tank device will appear on the flow sheet. You will notice that the mouse cursor is still showing that the tank device is still connected. This is so you can put all of your tanks on your flow sheet at one time and don't have to reselect the device multiple times to add it. Since I have all the tanks I need for my model, I can either choose the select tool in the toolbox or hit the escape button on my keyboard to remove the tank icon. Notice that my tank is purple. The purple means that the tanks are not fully designed. Now we are going to design my tank. So I'm going to select my tank. We're going to look on the right hand side of the screen to the property grid to design all our large devices and pipes. You will see that the required design information is the name, elevation, surface pressure, and liquid level. There is also fluid zone and pipe penetrations. The fluid zone specification is optional, and therefore I am not going to specify it, and the pipe penetrations will be covered in another section of the quick start. For the tank, I am going to change the name to supply tank. This tank has an elevation of 20 feet, so I will enter in 20 feet, and a surface pressure of 0 psig, so I will enter 0. The liquid level in the tank is 10 feet. Now if you click off of the supply tank, you will notice that the tank is now black. That means that the tank is fully designed and able to be used in the calculations. Now that we have our tank designed, let's add a pump to our system. I am going to select a sizing pump from the toolbox because I do not have a curve to enter for my pump. If I had a pump curve for my pump, then I would select a centrifugal pump device instead. I am going to add the sizing pump to my system the same way I did for my tank. Left click the mouse on the sizing pump icon in the toolbox. Move my cursor to the location I want on my flow sheet, then left click to drop the device on the sheet. Then hit the escape button or select button in the toolbox to release the device selection. Just like in the tank, we are going to look to the property grid to fill out the required information for the pump. I am going to change the name of my pump to transfer pump. Set my suction elevation to 0 feet and my discharge elevation to 0 feet as well. The last thing I need to specify is the operation of my pump. For a sizing pump there are three different modes of operation. Flow rate, discharge pressure, and suction pressure. There's also temperature control, but this can be used when you're talking about the heat source sink device. For my system, I'm going to specify the flow rate. I need 800 GPM, so I will enter 800 for my GPM. Now I've filled out everything in the property grid, and my device is black, so I can move on to my next device. After the pump, we need to heat up our liquid before we pass it to our demand. Therefore, we are going to add a heat source sink to our system next. I select the heat source sink from the toolbox and drop it on the flow sheet near the pump. Hit the escape key to release the device and let's move to the property grid. I'm going to name the heat source sink heater and specify an inlet and outlet elevation to be 75 feet. Next, I'm going to specify a curve for the hydraulic calculations to operate off of. Here I can enter in the curve if it is provided by a manufacturer, or I can estimate the curve from an operating point. I'm going to put the description for my curve as clean heater. And since I only have an operating point for my heater, I'm going to choose estimate curve data and enter in my static pressure drop to be 0 psi, my flow rate to be 800 gpm, 
the pressure drop at that flow rate to be 5 psi, and the maximum flow rate to be 1200 GPM. I'm going to click OK, and then I will see that the curve has been filled in up to the max flow rate. I will click OK again to close the curve dialog box. As you can see, the description has filled in. I also have the option of selecting a device that will control the flow through the heater. But since I do not have one in the system, I am going to leave the flow control device section set to none. The next piece of information I need to specify is my thermal calculation. I want to know what my heat transfer rate is for the heater. Therefore, I am going to set the thermal parameter to be calculated as my heat transfer rate. I'll leave the flow rate to be calculated from the hydraulic calculation. Then I'll hit OK to close the dialog box. Finally, I am going to leave my temperature tolerance set to the default 5 degrees, which is the default. Now my heater appears black and is fully designed. The next device in my system is a control valve. I am going to select the control valve from the toolbox, and then move to the location on the flow sheet that I would like my valve, and left click once. Then hit the escape key to release the selection. I am going to go to the property grid to fill out all the required data. My control valve's name is CV1, with an elevation of 115 feet. I do not have the manufacturer's data, but I do have enough information to estimate the data. I will do this using the valve data estimator. I am going to set the actuator to rotary and leave my coefficient set to CV. My nominal size of my valve is 4 inches, and now I am going to open the valve data estimator to fill in the rest of the data. My valve body style is butterfly eccentric shaft, with a trim type of offset seat 70 degrees. There are other options for other valve styles. My flow can go in either direction in the valve, so I will specify that as well. And now that my valve type is selected, it is time to estimate the curve. My characteristic curve is equal percentage with a C sub V of 400 at 90 degrees open. I will click OK, and now the, all the information required for my valve is filled in. The last few things to specify are the valve operation and the allowable DP min and max. For operation, my valve is operating in a manual position of 75% open, so I will click the ellipses button to open the dialog. I'll set it to manual position and specify 75%, then I'll click OK to close the dialog. Now I have the allowable DP min and max to specify. This will warn me if my valve is operating outside of this allowable min and max. I will enter a min of 0 psi and a max of 40 psi. Now my valve is black and is fully designed. The last device in my system is a pressure boundary leading out to my demands. I am going to select the pressure boundary from my toolbox and then place the pressure boundary on the flow sheet. Then I'll hit escape to release the selection and go over to the property grid to fill out the information. Now I am going to name the pressure boundary to my demands and specify my elevation to be 125 feet with a pressure of 10 psig. And that is all we need to specify for a pressure boundary. We have now learned what it takes to add our large devices to the flow sheet and can move forward in modeling our systems.